Okay, so um, today I want to talk about um, Matthew C and how it works for a highly intelligent, very mathy, quote unquote, gifted kind of child. Because, um, gosh, I've read these reviews from people saying like, oh, Matthew C, it was too boring and repetitive. My son's good at math. He was bored and all that stuff. But like, there's no reason to be bored with Matthew C. Um, I think that people are not reading the teacher's manual and they're just kind of like doing math you see like you would do another math curriculum. So like for instance, if you take a spiral math curriculum, you start at the beginning and you just do all the pages. And maybe you might only do odds or only evens or something like that if you want to cut down some of the work. Um, but that's how you do it. Math you see, you do not just like start with lesson 1a and go to lesson 30g um you so each lesson i'm on i have 21 here from primer and each lesson it goes from like a and then b and c and d and e and f and g and you don't need to do all those seriously some children do need to do all those um or some children just want to do all those and you know so they do them but you don't have to you know you could just do like a and d and if that's enough for your child and they want to move on then let them move on don't sit and do all the lessons and all that stuff gosh don't torture them like that it's a mastery program once they've mastered it you can move on Okay, now D does have systematic review. So I know some people have been like, well, if it's mastery, that means that they never review anything else. And once you've moved it, you don't visit it again. No, you do. They're, they do have systematic review. And the way that it's structured, when you're always checking your work and stuff like that, like you're always going back and doing the old stuff that you learned. You're always still calculating and stuff. You just get some more and more in depth. Um, so. My son, um, he's very good at math. And when he was in first grade, he did alpha in six weeks. Then he did beta in six weeks. Then I was like, I spent $200 on math curriculum for you this year. And you finished it in 12 weeks. And then I said, okay, we're going to try something else. So uh, we worked on memorizing math facts which is extremely important. Please have your children memorize their math facts and know how to skip count. Um, we did that. And then I had him uh, work on doing Saxon. And in second grade, we just came back to math, you see. And I try to like slow him down more. Um, but now he's, he, he just, you know, he's good at math. So now he's going to finish his eight. He's at the beginning of, well, we're like a few months into fifth grade. He's 10, he's gonna finish Zeta, and he's gonna start pre-algebra. And, um, I mean, Zeta is just a breeze for him. He's doing two lessons a day, and I don't even help him with it, I just check his work and he gets it right. Um, you know, how do I know that he's doing okay? Well, I give him the unit tests, and he's always passed every unit test, and he just, it's good every once in a while I have to kind of like re-explain something or we have to watch the lesson again but um, but that's rare and it's just worked out really well uh, my other two kids are also good at math but they're not like you know I don't know they're so little I mean they might end up being that good at math too I've tried to like you know put the brakes on going through the curriculum that fast like to stretch out Matthew C. Alpha with my middle child when she was in first grade. Um, she, she did Alpha and then we did a lot of Singapore math to kind of like supplement. And we have Life of Fred too. Um, but you know, when your kids really like math, you've got to not only use, I think, one thing, you know, get some other stuff in there and then you can stretch it out a little bit and you don't have to end up buying three levels of math you see in one year, which that might happen to me this year. I think we might go through 
zeta in pre-algebra and then he notes during algebra and um you know i'm not gonna complain that my kid is good at math like that's not a tough problem to have um but definitely with math uc it has worked extremely well for my kids who are good at math um and the weird thing is that I read that Matthew C is used in um, for remedial math classes, like special education math classes, where they're not so worried about standardized tests and stuff like that, um, because that it's you know it's so good for teaching math remediation and the basics and stuff like that. So I just think it's funny that the curriculum is so flexible that it can teach all these different levels. But you know why? Because they're not going through page after page and not thinking about it. The teacher is really important. You just have to decide what your child is ready for. You do that with tests or with working with them and seeing what they're ready for. And you just, you know, don't bore them to death by giving them every page if they don't need it. And then don't move too fast. If they haven't mastered something, don't move on yet. Just keep doing it until they master it. It's okay. Um, so that's my Matthew C for gifted kids review and um, I hope that it's useful for you.